Welcome to iLecture Online. Weight is an interesting concept often confused with mass. Let's say we go to the store and we want to buy a pound of apples. A pound is the concept of weight and what that means is the force by which earth pulls on the apples, pulling towards the center of the earth. So weight indeed is a force and it's a force caused by gravity. The equation, what we use for that is we use the letter W to indicate weight and it's equal to the product of the mass of an object times acceleration due to gravity. The mass can never change. You take an object in space, it still has the same mass, but if g changes, for example in space g becomes smaller and far enough away from the earth in all intended purposes, g becomes zero, then of course an object does not have any weight at all. If you take an object to the moon, g is a smaller quantity, therefore the weight will be less, even though the mass will still be the same. What we need to know here in physics is how to deal with weight. How does weight play a role in various types of situations? For example, if an object is sitting on the ground, what do we mean by weight? Well, the weight is the force that pulls the object towards the ground. In this case, we can indicate that with an arrow that indicates the force of gravity. So we have the weight is equal to m times g. If you want to write it in a vector quantity, you can actually write it like this. Weight with a little arrow on top because it's a vector quantity, has both magnitude and direction, is equal to the mass of an object, which is a scalar, times acceleration due to gravity, which is also a vector. Since the earth is pulling down on the weight, the weight will then be pressing up against the floor or the ground. The ground will be pushing back. Newton's third law says for every action there is a, a force, a reaction. There will be a reactionary force pulling back called the normal force, so we call that the normal force, which is normal to the surface, and that would be equal in magnitude, equal to the weight of the object. Since those two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, they will cancel each other out and there will be no acceleration, the object will just sit there. Of course, we can also think of the normal force being vector, so we can put a vector quantity on there and then we have to put a vector quantity on that. However, since that's in a positive direction, we may want to put an absolute value of signs around that. Hmm, that doesn't work quite well, does it? No, we got to figure out a different way of expressing that. Because typically, g is a negative quantity. It's understood in this, in this instance, we know that the force of gravity is pulling downward. So maybe we can write it as a minus mg like this indicating that's in the opposite direction from the weight of the object, and that will work. What does it look like when we have an object hanging down from a string? If we just look at this portion alone, we can then see that the weight of the weight, the force of gravity, pulls down on the object equal in magnitude to mg, and then there's an opposite force in the opposite direction, the tension on the string which pulls upward, and the magnitude that is also equal to mg. So in terms of the magnitude, the magnitude of the tension equals the magnitude of the weight. How do we deal with it when an object is sitting on an inclined plane, for example, where the surface makes an angle of theta with the horizontal? The weight is still the weight of the object. The weight starts from the center of gravity of the object and pulls down towards the earth, towards the center of the earth. And then what we typically do is we divide that vector into its perpendicular component and the parallel component to the surface. This component becomes the mg times the cosine of theta because this angle theta here is the same as the angle theta over there and this component here becomes mg times the sine of theta. Now we still have a normal force, a force pushing back, but in this case the force doesn't push back against mg, it's a normal force to the surface, and let me use a slightly different color here, I'll use blue instead. You can see here, see here that the normal force is in the opposite direction to this component of the weight, and therefore we can say that the normal force is equal to mg cosine of theta. I'll put absolute value signs around it, it just simply says that the magnitude of that force is the same as the magnitude of this component of the weight, and it's in the opposite direction. Again, there will be no movement or no acceleration in this direction, but if there's no friction on the surface, and this component is the only component along the surface of the incline, then of course the object will accelerate down the incline. Sometimes you have situations where objects are hung from strings, but then they're connected to the ceiling with a multitude of strings like this. Again, we have the weight of the object pulling down. This is mg. We have the tension pulling back up in this direction, t, which is equal to the magnitude of mg. It's equal to the weight of the object. 
and then that is connected to these two strings. Now what we can say here is that this string, let's call it string number one, will have a tension in this direction and this string, call it string number two, will have a tension in this direction. And we can see that here is tension one, here is tension two. If you want to think of them as vectors, let's put vector components on there like that. So you can see that those two are vectors. And those two vectors combined with this vector, if I go like this, and I'll put absolute value signs around it. So again, you can see that these three vectors must cancel each other out. If you take a look at it over here, we have the string down here that goes to the mass. And we have a string going in this direction, a string going in this direction. And if you draw little vectors on it or little arrows representing vectors, this would be tension one, this would be tension two, and this would be the tension between the mass and this connection of the two other strings. And then if you sum all the vectors together, because we can put a vector symbol on that, if you add the three vectors together, those will have to be zero because nothing is moving, nothing is accelerating, which means that the two components of T1 and T2, draw it like this, this would be T1 in the Y direction, this here would be T1 in the X direction, this here would be T2 in the Y direction, and this here would be T2 in the X direction. And what you can see here, that T1 in the X direction must cancel out T2 in the X direction, so those must be equal to each other. And the sum of the two Y components, T1 in the Y direction and T2 in the Y direction combined, must equal the tension here between the connection and the object. And since we know that the tension here must equal to the weight, then those two components here must also equal to the weight of the object. So here we can see the interplay between the concept of weight and the concept of tension when there's objects such as strings or ropes or cables attached to the objects that are subjected to the force of gravity. So now we understand at least the difference between weight and mass, and we understand how weight and interacts with strings that are attached to these, these objects so that we can see that the weight is then transferred into either a normal force pushing back on the floor or a tension in the cable counteracting to the mass or the weight, I should say, of the object. And that's how we look at that.